And welcome everyone here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for part two of our Rising Tides set review. This is the first expansion for Legends of Runeterra. It comes out tomorrow. We got the, all the cards today. We now know about all of them. Part one had Freljord, Noxus, and uh, Shadow Isles. You can see up here. So that was that was the first video. For those of y'all watching on YouTube, this video here, part two, we're going to go over all of the new cards in Piltover and Zaun. Ionia and Demacia, so about 30 new cards. Start. We'll start with Piltover and Zon. Then we're gonna have uh, break up the Bilgewater region, the new region, into two videos. The first uh, video will be all of the cards that cost zero to three mana, and then the next one will be all the cards that cost four to nine mana. Um, this is Mobile Addicts. That's that's what this website is. Um, we're gonna start with the champion first, so we can kind of learn the champion, and then while we discuss the other cards, we can. Um, talk about the synergies that they have with the new champion. This new cha champion is Vi, even though I always just read this as six, the Roman numeral. Um, that's It's hard for me to read this as Vi, but I'll, I'll get used to it. Um, I do wish that Vi cost six mana, so there would be some synergy there, and you know maybe it was better than, you know, yeah, I just wish that happened. But anyway, all right, so this is Vi is five mana two five um but while i'm in play or in hand grant me plus one plus zero when you play another card so if you just so this is a card so you really want to have vi in your opener because then every single card that you play so you probably um sorry so every single card you play give gives us plus one plus zero um and then the max is plus eight plus zero so the max is being a ten five um, so this is like a five drop that you probably won't mulligan that often, even though you know, you know, a lot of times you mulligan five mana cards. This is one that incentivizes you to keep it in your hand. Vi also has challenger and is tough, um, and levels up whenever you strike for 10 or more, uh, whenever Vi strikes for 10 or more. So, you know, you need to get, uh, Vi to be a 10, five or use some kind of other pump. So not super easy to level up with Vi, but this is a really good card. If, you know, kind of compare this to Thresh because that's like a baseline that we know about. Thresh that you know we we've played, we you know we see how it plays and everything. Thresh is a three six challenger, and I think Vi is better than that. I think that um, being just just that part, um, being a two five that you know that grows, but also having toughness. Like I'd rather have five. Uh, I'd rather have tough with five health than six health and no tough. So I think that's just an upgrade. And then it's probably better to have the two that, that grows more than just a three. So that's probably an upgrade too. But it's probably harder to level up by. But if you do level up by, <clears throat> then you have just a 10-6 all the time, right? Like it just changes to be uh, 10 power, um, six toughness, still tough. And then whenever I strike a unit while attacking, deal five to the enemy nexus. So not overwhelm, but basically overwhelm. You have to be attacking with Vi um, and then also strike the unit and then do five to the enemy nexus. That is a lot of damage. That's, you know, five out of 20. That's one fourth. That's 25% of your life total. And especially how with Legends of Runeterra, you can't gain life over 20. Um, that's a lot of damage. That's that, you know, can really add up. So that's really powerful. So this is a good champion. I do. I do just like this champion as just the baseline card, which I think is really important for a champion not to be super reliant on the level up. The level up's nice, of course. It's an upgrade. It's, it's good. But this is just a decent champion as is, and also just gives Piltover and Zaun something that it doesn't have. Piltover and Zaun doesn't have like a, a powerful five mana card. Um, I mean, I'm obviously like Heimerdinger, you know, but I'm just talking about like a mid range card, like just a card you play in creature decks, like a top end curve kind of card. Um, this doesn't doesn't have that. Um, ooh, Marpaletti, that's something I didn't even think about. Like if you can, if you have this leveled up and you get, um, you pair this with Whirling Death, you can have Vi be attacking and then Whirling Death something else and you do five damage to the enemy Nexus with the Whirling Death and then also five damage uh, 
there. I don't know. I don't know if that doesn't. I, actually, honestly, I don't know if that counts. Because you're you are attacking and you do strike a unit. I'm not sure if those will count though. Like, can you you know if you can single combat and strike while you're attack? You know, or does it mean that like it's it's the damage from attacking? Like, is it the combat damage that then is dealt five to the enemy nexus? Um, yeah, that is true. It doesn't say combat damage while attacking, so we'll have to kind of see how it plays. I hope it does, because that is that is really interesting. I hope that Whirling Death and Single Combat, that those um, will do 5 to the enemy Nexus also, but um, yeah, who knows? We'll have to kind of see. But yeah, Strong Champion, definitely one that, that I like. This is definitely my kind of card. I like mid-range, you know, just like good-sized mid-range cards. I like Challenger as a mechanic. I enjoy playing Challenger stuff. So yeah, just a, a good champion. I like this one. Oh man, Judgment. Yeah, Judgment with... Yeah, you don't even need Judge... You, you can play a Fiora Vi Judgment deck and then either either Fiora wins or Vi wins. Um, either, you know, either one can get you those free wins with, with Judgment. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. All right, let's go back to the the beginning, <clears throat> which our first guess our first card is Trail of Evidence. Oh, we didn't talk about the champion spell. Um, what is Vi's champion spell? It is Vault Breaker. So three mana burst, give an ally plus two plus zero this round, and create a fleeting uh, Vault Breaker in your hand. I'm not a big fan of this card, honestly. Uh, like, you're going to get it because it's the champion spell for Vi, but I don't think I'm probably playing this too much um, besides that. Like, sure, it, it does, you know, it does give you another fleeting one so you can continue to cast it, but it's just so much mana for so little damage and no toughness pump. Um, doesn't even give, like, overwhelm or anything like that, and it's just this round. I don't think this is... This is arguably the the worst card that that in the entire set that's been previewed. Okay, wait. Marplay says, "Hear me out." So, Cloud Drinker, Dusk and Dawn, Vault Breaker. I don't know how the how does what's the combo? Cloud Drinker is the um. <clears throat> yeah, I don't I don't really understand. I don't see the combo there. Okay. Oh, okay, it's the 6 mana. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, I was thinking of a different card. All right. So Cloud Drinker is the 6 mana. Okay, I was thinking of a different card. 6 mana 3 5 your burst spells cost one less. Okay, and then you Dusk for Dawn gives you two copies. So you'd have three cl Cloud Drinkers in play. So then all of your burst spells would cost three less. Okay, I see the... And so then since they all cost three less, then you get to Vault Breaker um, and uh, for zero mana, of course. Give an ally plus two plus zero, create a new one, and you just keep doing that. And so like you just get to attack whatever they don't block. Um, it's, you know, infinite damage. That's pretty janky. Maybe we have to do that for Meme Deck Monday. We may have to do that, but <laughs> that is pretty pretty janky. All right, trail of evidence. Um, two mana burst speed. Create a random two cost card in hand. It costs zero this round. The thing about this card is, you know, this is obviously a, a pretty high variance card. Sometimes you're going to get a, a random two cost card that you really don't want. Sometimes it will get you something that you could really like. But the thing about this card that's not that makes it not so bad is there's a lot of spell matter cards just in in the game in general, like cards that um, want you to play spells, you know, that count like how many spells you've played or um, things of that nature. Like they get buffs whenever you play a spell. 
And trail of, trail of Evidence allows you to trade two spell mana for any two cost card, and it could be like an ally that costs two mana that then caught that then you get to play. So you can basically use spell mana to play an ally, but you're just getting a random ally. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it helps. It helps with pursuit of perfection. That's true. Um, if, and but then also if you think about like with this set one one keyword that we'll go over whenever we get to Bilgewater, a new keyword from the set is attune that um you know gives you one spell mana and so there's if you can ha if you have like attune cards that give you extra spell mana maybe use that spell mana on a trail of evidence that gets you you know a, a two cost um ally but i, th I think that's kind of its power um you know maybe you were combining it with stuff like starlet seer that um you know every time you cast a spell you're pumping up the top ally of your deck and so like you know you just want to be able to play more spells um things like that um i'm not sure if this would really go in like an ezreal deck um it, it is like a spell like if you're playing a i think this works really well with um lee sin the new Ionia champion that we'll talk about in a little bit. <clears throat> but basically, Lee Sin levels up once you cast seven spells, and so this can just be a spell for you, and then it also, um, you know, Lee Sin also gets more powerful when you replay spells each turn. Rummage plus this is three mana, draw two. I mean, I guess if it's like two cards though for three mana draw two if you i mean yeah it's kind of yeah it's kind of waste two mana in that situation it's it's like if if you're if you create a two cost card that's terrible and you don't want it at all that it, it if you end up getting you know getting a, a really bad card that you don't want then you can rummage it away i suppose Um, yeah, but you know, so it's, it's good. Basically it's going to be something that it's not going to, it's not real powerful. It's not very powerful to be honest. And it's not going to go in a lot every deck, but it's something that can be filler. Um, and if you have a deck that creates, um, spell mana pretty well, this could work. The... The kind of obvious example is the um, the other card from Piltover Zon that costs two mana. That's a two one. That whenever you play it, you create two spell mana. So on turn two, you can play that card, create two spell mana, play Trail of Evidence, get another two cost ally, cast that two cost ally because it costs zero this round, and then on turn two, you can have two two drops on t turn two. Like, is that super powerful? Probably, I don't know. Maybe not, but it does help you get ahead. Um, I'm not sure. Not sure if we're really, you know, that's that's not like a, you know, probably gonna be like a tier one thing. But you know, that's that's something. That's something you can do. Um, uh, but I, I like the card. There's there's a lot of like small synergies with the card, so I like it. Veteran investigator. Two mana, three, two. When I'm summoned, all players draw one. Another good card. This is... So, all players draw one. Um, you're increasing the resources that both players have access to. So, you're increasing the resources in the game. Um, you get an extra card. Your opponent gets an extra card. That does mean that um, your opponent is going to have... You know, with, with your opponent having an extra card, you can think of it as, has, like, they're going to more likely curve out. They're going to have, um, you know, a better hand. Like, they're, you know, it's going to be more difficult to beat your opponent, basically. But, um, with that being said, of course, you also get that, that extra card. So, you want, <clears throat> you want uh, to be playing a game plan where you, where you basically want both players to have more resources. Um, that kind of game plan is, is probably a game plan where you have cheaper cards. You're probably not playing a, 
a deck where all of your cards are really expensive because then if, if you're playing a deck with like a whole bunch of expensive cards and you're playing this card drawing one more means you just have you know more four and five and six mana cards in hand where it's it's difficult to double spell with those kind of cards and empty your hand you really want to be playing a deck with a lot of cheaper cards um, where you can double spell and you do empty your hand a little bit more and you can um leverage your extra card um, more than your oppo opponent can leverage their extra card kind of thing um so yeah so like so basically like an aggro deck an aggro deck wants that extra card and doesn't really mind if the like the so basically so those kind of decks like an aggro deck stuff like that like when your cards are cheaper you would prefer to have extra cards because you can um, get better value out of your cards by earlier in the game by being able to cast more cards earlier than what your opponent can because their cards are more expensive. Um, no, I don't think there. I don't think there is a balance patch as well because there, uh, the patch notes did not have anything about. That's the patch notes from today. Did not have anything about a balance patch. They did change, yeah, the, there is a change in gameplay of whenever your board is full and you have six units in play before you could, uh, you just couldn't play any other units, but now you're able to just play another unit and choose one to be obliterated. So you can, you can basically stack units on top of each other and, and obliterate others, um, but anyway, so yeah, so basically investigator, uh, this is more more of an aggro card and less of a control card because the control decks don't uh yeah i don't think you really want to play this in a control deck because um, their cards are a little bit more expensive a little slower this is more of a card for people that want to end the game faster they want like that extra burn spell um yeah so there we go Patrol Wardens, three mana, four, three. When I'm drawn, I cost one less this round. This is a pretty good card. Piltover and Zaun doesn't really have a big three mana card. Um, this doesn't have Overwhelm or anything like that. But, you know, if if you, for the most part, this is going to cost three. Like, this will cost three a majority of the time. A majority of the time, you'll have it in your opener or you'll draw it a turn that you can't really play it. Or don't want to play it like that kind of stuff um then uh and so like this so uh you know but there there will be times this cost two and when this costs two and you have a two mana four three that's that's pretty good um with that being said pnz does still already have like some pretty decent two and three mana cards and this is just a vanilla creature there's no no overwhelm you know there's there's nothing, you know, no kind of keywords anywhere. Um, so overall, I think this is probably not going to make the cut and uh, won't really see a ton of play. But, but we'll see. I mean, like when if you do, you know, like if you draw this in, like exactly on turn two and get to play it exactly on turn two and you get a four three, that could be pretty nice. It's you know, sump dredger without discarding a card. Basically, is that good enough to? Throw in all your decks? I don't know. Probably not. I mean, I'm not sure if it'll cost two a lot of the time because if you draw this later on in the game, you know, turn four, turn five, turn six, and so then it costs two, then it does force you that turn to play it. And so if you already had plans to play something else, maybe you're a little behind where like you need to play, you know, another thing. You don't really have the, you know, if it's not like your, your best play. I mean, it forces your hand to make it turn two or to make it two mana, right? Like you can't, um, yeah. So, so I don't know. I, I don't like that, how it, it forces you to play a certain way. All right. We've talked about Vault Breaker. Gotcha. Four mana fast. When drawn, it cost two less this round. Deal, uh, sorry, deal three to a unit. So it goes from four to two, so it could it could only cost two mana the turn that you draw it. This card's pretty good. This is this is probably going to be a a fairly well 
well-used card. <clears throat> the only thing is it is in the region, you know, with Get Excited and Mystic Shot. Um, if it was in a different region, it would probably see even more play. Um, but, uh, you know, four mana, deal three, that's that's not that bad of a deal. You know, that's, that's one, one more than Get Excited, um, but you don't have to discard a card. It's one less than Withering Whale, but you don't gain three life. Um, I guess you can kind of think of it like that. Like, if Withering Whale, or not Withering Whale, sorry, Grasp the Undying. If Grasp the Undying costs one less and you don't gain three life, is that better or worse? It's, you know, so, sometimes you don't really need the three life and you don't want to, you know, like, that one extra mana is a, is a really big deal. And then this, of course, has the added upside that if you get to play this later on in the game, the turn that you draw it, this for two mana is really, really good. If this was a two mana card, this would see all sorts of play everywhere. Like this as a two mana card is is amazing. Yeah, it's only units, just like Grass the Undying. It's only units, so this this you know this won't see any play in burn burn decks. Like it's too expensive for burn decks. This is this is a control card. This is like an Ez, you know this is an Ezreal card. This is a card that makes Ezreal better. Um. Yeah, that's you know what this is. This is a control card for sure. Insightful Investigator. Four mana, three, three. When you play a two cost card, draw one fleeting. And I'm not exact. So I don't exactly understand what this, what this means. Draw one fleeting. Like one fleeting. Because that, like what is a fleeting? Okay. Okay. So what it means is that the card that you draw becomes fleeting. Okay. So every time you play a two cost card with this investigator out, you draw the top card of your deck and then that top card of your deck is now fleeting. That would be, okay. So that's um so that's definitely worse than draw one because you have to cast that card right then that was weird um the uh yeah but all right so anyway let's let's talk about the rest of the card so on its face we got a four mana three three you know that's okay we're we're basically chump lump territory um that's what this is going to really be competing with is chump lump we don't get to create the two um mu the two mushroom clouds right away but instead, after we play this, and this is in play, then if we cost a two-cost card, then we get to draw a card. And not only... So not only do we get to just draw a card then, but then that card has fleeting, and so then we have to cast that other card that we draw right away. It's going to be tough. This, this card seems like it's going to have some combo potential. It can maybe do... You know, maybe... Um, you know, it could maybe have some combo potential. It could... Could be good with stuff like Rummage, um, like ways to get rid of fleeting cards like that. Um, this seems like a card that's amazing on turn 10, if you have some two drops in hand also. <laughs> where, you get to, where if you have this card out, you know, you start playing two drops and you start getting other things you can play. So if you have a whole bunch of two mana cards um, and it's like turn turn 10, yeah, it's like, it's like Experimental Frenzy. It's kind of like Experimental Frenzy, um, but it only works with two mana cards, and then you have to cast the next card right away. It has a lot of a lot of hoops you got to jump through, and a lot of deck building uh, decisions you got to make uh, in, to enable it. But the payoff can be pretty big. You know, you can get a lot of cards. It can be a pretty big payoff, but a lot of uh, hoops you got to jump through. Yeah, so. 
Um, yeah, this kind of seems like, you know, maybe a meme tier Monday deck, like where we try building an, an infinite insightful investigator deck or something. It does it seems pretty great with uh, the, the two mana, two one that you play it, you get two spell mana, you know, with that, and then like the two mana spells, um, you know, like you, you play that and then you play uh, like the Trail of Evidence. You get another random two mana card, and you draw some more things. <laughs> not does not really seem like a, a a great thing to be doing, but you know, yeah. All right, suit up. Four mana burst. When drawn, cost two less this round. Set an ally to four four. So unfortunately, it's just your allies. You can't do it on the opponent's cards. So, you know, if your opponent has like this big Trindamir or something, you can't just set it to a four-four. Um, you know, it's only your cards. But um, that can be like a protection spell if you think about using this on like a Heimerdinger that would would have been like a one-three that would die. You set it to a four-four. I guess that that's really only adding one point to the toughness. Um, Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure if we're we're putting this anywhere. Um, but oh, regular elf. I um, yeah, I've switched over to Legends of Runeterra. Really like this game. This is what I wrote a couple of months ago. I like this game a lot, and why I've been playing this one. Uh, yeah, so you can play it on, yeah, play it on an Ezreal, so you can attack for more. Um, it's just, is that really worth an entire card? I don't know. I, I don't feel like this, this, honestly, is going to make, make it. You know, like, you can only put 40 cards in your deck, and I just don't think that Suit Up is going to be one of them. I'm not expecting this card to see play. All right, so... Sub Percival. We got the cat. Five mana, one five. I have not seen this card yet. Five mana, one five, elusive. When I'm summoned, draw one. Okay, that's good. Then if you've played at least 10 other cards with different names, grant me plus four plus zero. Okay. So, you know, this is basically like the Pursuit of Perfection. Um, it's that kind of, you know, for that kind of deck, this is... If you have cast cards, 10 other cards with different names, this is a 5 mana 5-5 five, five elusive when I'm summoned draw 1. That is really, really powerful. That is just above the curve. It's, a, it's an amazing body. It has elusive. That's huge for an elusive unit. And it has when I'm summoned draw 1. Um, it's probably not something you play on turn 5, though, for that. But I like this card. I like this card. Um, this, uh, yeah, I mean, this is definitely my kind of card. This is not going to be like a, you know, a tier one card, likely. But this is, yeah, this is, I'm going to be playing this in, in my jank decks with my um, back alley bar keeps, creating a bunch of different cards and like that two drop where you get the random two mana card yeah i like sub -Percival. this is maybe my favorite card from the set now i hadn't seen this card before this one's awesome though yeah that is true we need it we need an emote of this cat that's true i like it all right we've talked about vi chief Mechanist Zevi. So six mana, five, six. When you draw a card, give it fleeting and create a copy of it. I don't love this card, honestly. So like basically all of your, every single card you draw is doubled. You get two, you know, two of every single card you draw, but you have to cast them that turn because they are fleeting, um, you know, but it can give you some, some more spells to play, but you just got to play them right then. Um, yeah, I love that elusive part with that with that last card. <laughs> Piltover cards are too weird for you. 
They are pretty weird. This and this one at six mana, I just don't. I don't really see it. I don't really see this card um, seeing any play, to be honest. Um, yeah. Is that our last Piltover card? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, I just don't think this card's too good. Um, how does Level Up Jinx interact with Fleeting? Uh, you still need like. Uh, um, let's see, Bilgewater, or let's see, we're going to Ionia. It's a weird commercial. Um, like, Level Up Jinx still needs you to, to empty your hand to, to create the, the four damage spell. If you have only Fleetings in hand, your, your hand is not empty. The fleeting cards ca ca they count as cards in your hand, so your hand's not empty. All right, Ionia's new champion is Lee Sin, six mana three six. When you've cast a spell, give me Challenger this round, and when you've cast another, give me Barrier. And then levels up when you cast seven plus spells this game. That's not going to be a difficult level up to hit. That's going to be a pretty easy level up to hit, to be honest. Um, you know, you can build your deck with a lot of spells. And by the time you're playing a six mana champion, it's not too difficult to have cast seven spells by the time you cast Lee Sin. Um, or, you know, shortly thereafter. So I think, I think leveling up's really not going to be too difficult. Um, and a leveled up Lee Sin, again, is now, is a 4-7, doing a little bit better, but again, um, has the, this first part. When you cast a spell, give me Challenger this round, and when you cast another, give me Barrier, which I again, assume is this round. Well, I guess Barriers go away. But anyway, um, but then it has Dragon Rage, the enemies that I challenge. So every time you challenge an enemy, um, <laughs> it kicks an enemy into their nexus, striking both. But then if the enemy survives, you recall it. All right, it's a lot of text. So we gotta be casting a good amount of spells and we have to have Lee Sin in play and then cast a spell for Challenger. So like Lee Sin doesn't even have Challenger right away. So you have to cast a spell to give Lee Sin Challenger, which isn't gonna be always gonna be easy. Like. We're talking about like a late game where you've already cast seven spells or or so, but you've at least cast your six mana champion. And so then you've got to have other spells that you want to be casting as well. This basically incentivizes playing a lot of um, a lot of cheap spells because you want to be able to play multiple whenever you have Lee Sin in play. So you can do the challenger and the barrier. But if you're playing a bunch of cheap spells, do we really have those spells still left whenever we have Lee Sin in play? I don't know. I don't know. I kind of feel like Lee Sin's not going to play as well as the card reads. That's, that's kind of how I feel. Oh, whoops. I wanted to do... There we go. Yeah, I wanted to switch it back over to this. Um, yeah, so you, yeah, you cast him on your opponent's attack turn. That's... <clears throat> yeah, burst burst speed is going to be key with Lee Sin. Burst, burst speed is just going to be necessary. Like, you have to be playing burst spells. Um, because, like, when it's your turn, you untap with Lee Sin. You have to be playing burst spells to give Lee Sin Challenger. Maybe another one for barrier. And then go straight to attack. Right, so that's going to be absolutely vital. So, you know, you're, you're looking at, like, Twin Disciplines and stuff like that. Other burst spell speeds. Um, but, yeah, yeah. So, and then, yeah, we'll talk about, like, the rest of the Ionia cards. Yeah, so some of these other Ionia cards help support him. Definitely. But um, burst speed is going to be key. But overall, at six mana, I don't know. I'm not... There's a lot of good champions, and I'm I'm not super sold, but um, let's see what we got. Um, oh yeah, and then just just 
just Dragon's Rage as a card. You know, Dra Dragon's Rage is the... the. I assume Dragon's Rage is also the, the champion spell. It doesn't say Lee Sin's champion. Oh, there it is. Never mind. I have to just keep going. Lee Sin's Dragon Rage. Um, yeah, as, as a card... Uh, seven mana is too much for this card, basically. An ally kicks an enemy into their nexus, striking both. Well, maybe not. I guess that is basically a seven mana card, because that that means you don't have to play that during combat, right? Like that, so that you don't have to have like something that's attacking. So this gives Ionia, kind of gives them like a vengeance type card, where you can just, you know, you. It's, it is slow speed. It's very easy to interact with, but it does... Um, yeah, it can be a removal spell and nexus damage. Yeah, it can be. At at best. At best. But there's... There's a lot of downside al along the way. You, know, you have to target your own ally. You have to target there. Um, and it's slow speed. Um... Yeah, so there's there's a lot of downside there. Yeah, they glimpse their own unit. They bounce your unit. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of things that could not work. You could have just like small units in play and nothing that actually kills the thing that you need to kill. So you are relying on having... You are relying on having a unit in play that can even do the damage that you need to. There's at a seven mana card. I just don't. I don't think we're playing that for seven mana. Most likely. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. A leveled up, a leveled up buy. Could use that. That could hurt. All right, claws of the dragon. Two mana, three two. Summon me from hand once you've played two spells this round. Yeah, this this card seems pretty good. And. You know, 2-mana 3-2, perfectly fine. But being able to get a free 2-mana 3-2... Well, not 2-mana anymore. Being able to get a free 3-2 potentially um, after you cast two spells could be really good. This seems to pair perfectly with um, some of those cards we just went over in Piltover and Zaun. This seems to pair really, really well with like that 2-mana card that uh, gives you a free 2-mana card. You know, like that very first card, whatever that, whatever the name of that thing was, that we talked about with PNZ. Because for two mana, you play that. If you get a spell that's also two mana that you also that you get to play, then boom, you get a free Claws of the Dragon. That could be cool. Um, it's like an Arc Light Phoenix. Yeah, this is kind of like Arc Light Arc Light Phoenix. It doesn't have you know elusive. Um. Yeah. So this. Uh. You know, maybe this goes into the janky deck with built around that four mana card that whenever you play two mana spells, you get a you get to draw a fleeting spell. You know, maybe this is part of that, and then you know, you you're like going off and you play two spells, and now this is free, so you play this, and so then you draw another spell that's fleeting that you get to play that thing. Um, you know, maybe you get more of these and they're free. I don't know. Um, it's not a may, right? Once you've played two spells, this just automatically goes into play. I don't know if that will be a downside ever. If you need like, if you need like an extra space for something else, and this just automatically goes into play, but it's it's not a may. I think it's a it's a solid card. You know, it's an it's a pretty solid two drop. All right, another two drop. Uh, one three attune, so it adds one spell mana back. Round start, summon a dragling, dragonling, dragonling. If you cast two plus spells this round, so if you cast two plus spells, you get a, a dragonling that is an ephemeral two one with life steal. Not bad. Good blocker. Good attacker gains you a little bit of life. Cool little card. There's not like very much downside with this card. You know, you're only spending two mana for a one three, but then it also attunes. So it also gives you one spell mana back. So you're really not, 
having much downside playing this. And the upside is, um, you know, like your round start, if you cast two plus spells, you get a, a Dragonling, and you can do that a couple of times. It's another kind of build around card, but could just be a, a two drop to, to play in a, in a spell heavy deck. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of downside here. All right, more two mana spells. We have Retreat. Um, recall an ally to create a fleeting return in hand. And then return is one mana. Summon an ally that costs three or less from your hand. So basically, you can spend three total mana to bounce one of your allies and then replay it. And that can be your two spells for your Eye of the Dragon or for your Claws of the Dragon. So you can tell like they're they're really trying to um, put these together. Um, besides being in a combo deck, I think Retreat can does have potential to just see play in um, just kind of more mid-range type decks as, as basically as a protection spell. Um, Think about, like, let's say you're playing a, uh, you know, an aggro deck, we'll say. Let's say you're playing Zed, um, you know, because this is Ionia. So you're playing Zed and you're playing, you know, like Lucian or Draven or, you know, other, you know, another champion that costs three or less. You can basically think of this as kind of like a twin disciplines, like where if they use a removal spell on your Zed or other cheap champion, you spend two mana, you bounce it back to your hand. And then one mana, you put it back out into play. So it's basically like the three mana protection spell to, um, you know, that, that protects against everything kind of thing. So, you know, like that's, that's certainly reasonable. And then if you have, if you have like um, things that you want to balance that have like enter the battlefield triggers that are um, beneficial, you know, that can just go up in value. Um, I don't think it's going to like take over, but this, this is certainly a card that, um, can see a, a good amount of play. Yeah, you can, yeah, you could, you could bounce your Omen Hawk and then summon a Zed. That's true. That's a good thing to point out that you don't have to summon the, the, like whatever ally you bounce. You can, you can summon anything you want. Um, so yeah, you can, uh. You can basically have a board where you have, you know, an Omen Hawk in play and you have three spell mana. It's like your opponent's end step. You have no regular mana and then you can use retreat plus return and put a um, and put a Zed in play and you can like surprise your opponent with that and then untap and you're attacking with your Zed. Yeah, that's true. Like these these attune cards can help you do this earlier for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could bounce plunder cards. Um I'm not sure. I guess we'd have to kind of go through and look. I, I don't remember if there if there are any three cost plunder cards. Cause is is the three mana four that's that's a three mana four three, the plunder, the Freljord one, right? That gives you a mana gem. Or is that a four mana card? I think that was a four mana four three. I think that was a four mana four three. But if that was a three mana four three, that would be awesome. Okay, it's four mana. Dang, it's four mana. That would be great. All right, Sonic Wave, give an ally challenge two mana burst. So again, we're we're on this two mana theme. Uh, give an ally challenger this round and then create a fleeting resonating strike in hand. And then resonating strike is one mana, um, you know, also fleeting and burst and give an ally plus two plus zero. So for three total mana with your two spells, you grant give one of your allies challenger and plus two plus zero. I'm not. I'm not very big on this card. I don't. I don't think that we're really going to be playing this card. Um, you, you know, compare this to um, on guard, which is three mana. Give all of your allies challenger. 
and that's in a region um, with Demacia where that's much more valuable than Ionia. It's, it's not as valuable in Ionia because your, uh, your allies are usually smaller. So I think this is probably only, only in, uh, like, if you really need this challenger as, like, a removal spell for some reason. But, or if you really need more two mana spells and more ways to cast two spells. But that card doesn't seem too good. All right, Scales of the Dragon. Three mana, four, two, when I'm summoned to create a Dragon's Protection in hand. And Dragon's Protection is 2 mana, slow speed, grant an ally, plus 0, plus 3. So it gives, gives some ally a little bit of armor um, at slow speed. This is this is a permanent buff. You know, this is a grant an ally, plus 0, plus 3 permanently. Um, so, you know, permanent buff there. And so you can spend, you can put those together and spend 5 mana with 2 of it being spell mana to make a 4-5. Um, yeah, so this isn't, you, you'd rather have four man or sorry, three mana, four, two, when I'm summoned, draw a card, right? Like if this was just summoned, draw a card, this would be more valuable because your average card is going to be better than this. It is, it is technically draw a card, but that card that you're drawing is always a dragon's protection, which is, uh, below average. Like that's, that's a, um, less than mediocre card um so you know yeah probably won't see too much play but if it was three mana four two draw a card probably see a lot more play but you're never playing this over shadow assassin for example like that's just you know you're just not doing that but again if for some reason you need even if you're playing a deck where you need even more two mana spells or like the two mana spell synergy that we've seen then i guess maybe all right, Concussive Palm, four mana fast, stun an enemy to summon a Tail of the Dragon. And Tail of the Dragon is a three mana, three, two, which I guess is collectible and played. And when I'm recalled, you tr transform me into Concussive Palm. Transforms into this. So this just seems like a pretty big upgrade on Steel Tempest. Steel Tempest is three mana, stun an en like stun an attacking enemy. This stuns any em enemy at all for one extra mana, but then also gets gives you a three two. I think that just seems so much better. So this card, you know, Steel Tempest already plays sees a little bit of play in Yasuo decks. This is definitely seems like a big upgrade for the Yasuo decks. You just get a free three two that if you end up bouncing the three two you, you you know you get your stun card again <clears throat> so i like this card i think this is you know this can certainly see play in um yasuo decks it's not sorry it's not perfect because it does com like at four mana in ionia you do keep uh you do compete complete uh you do compete directly against sometimes you just start talking too much you start talking too fast and then your words get jumbled up but anyway it does compete directly against deny and will of ionia so you're kind of thinking like well would i rather have will of ionia but you know would you rather have more than those and and this again you know it does make a three two three twos can trade with stuff so you can like stun something and trade um outside of yasuo decks i'm not sure how much we're playing this um, but four spell mana for a three, two, you can kind of think of it like that. Think of this as like, this is four spell mana for a three, two, that whenever it enters the battlefield, it, it stuns an enemy. So arachnoid sentry, right? So this is arachnoid sentry that costs one more mana, but, um, you can, you can spend spell mana to cast it. And it's also a fast speed spell so that, you know, like if your opponent goes straight to combat, you can't use Arachnoid Sentry, right? If they just open attack, you don't get to Arachnoid Sentry. Well, this, you can't. They open attack, you can use Concussive Palm. So this is a good card. This is a good card. What's up, Maximus? Definitely, um, 
Definitely a three of in a Yasuo deck, I think. Um, yeah, it is Ionia, so Ezreal Karma can use it too. So yeah, this is this is definitely probably a three of it in an Ezreal Karma deck. Yeah, works great with Ezreal. And then, and if you have if you have a leveled up Karma in play. You only stun the enemy once, but then you would summon two Tail of the Dragons, right? Like, you would get two three twos with a leveled up Karma. Yeah, I mean, because you'd cast this twice. You'd stun an enemy, create a Tail, then stun it again, create another Tail. Yeah. Real good card. Hey, Maximus, thanks for that resub. Thank you so much. Our first sub of the day. Is that right? I think that's right. Is that right? Yep, looks like that's right. All right, well, I need to hit my retirement goals real quick. <laughs> anyway, uh, deep meditation. Four mana burst costs two less to cast if you've cast two plus spells last round. Draw two other spells. It's a good card. This is a good card. Because just... On its own, four mana burst speed draw two spells from your deck. That's perfectly fine. You know, you're not drawing you're not drawing like your champions, but you're always drawing two spells for four mana. That's that's definitely playable. That's um yeah, like that's not bad. But then the fact that there's gonna be times where this costs two less, and there's gonna be times where you spend two mana to draw two spells, that is really good. Um so yeah, I think I think this is just going to be a good card for control decks. It just gives you some more, you know, gives you like your karma deck some more, um, some more fuel and ammunition, um, and then obviously a leveled up karma, saying you draw four spells for two mana. I mean, you know, if we're talking about, it's you know, it's comparable to, it's basically comparable to, uh, the, um, a ten mana an enlightened. Um, Karma's inside of ages, but you're drawing spells from your deck, so you're drawing good spells because they're all the spells in your deck, and you're not just drawing random spells. So, yeah, this is this is a really good card. So, Karma Ionia control decks have gotten better. Horns of the Dragon, six mana, four six double attack. Huh. This is the first card that just has double attack um, on it. You know, like Lucian and Senna need to level up to get that. So it's just double attacks. I don't really expect this. Like, this just seems like a, a this just seems like an expedition card. You know, like, this is like an expedition Ionia top end card. Like that they need like a you know a six mana body. Uh, I don't think this is really a, a card that we're going to be putting in our constructed decks, but for expedition. Good, good top end card. Yeah, you can pair this with Ghost. Yeah, that's true. You could, I guess you could pair this with Ghost to grant it elusive, and then Twin Disciplines to pump it, and then you're at like seven elusive double attack. I mean, I guess you can, you know, build a, you know, your standalone, you know, Horns of the Dragon deck, but there's probably just better things to be doing than that. All right, we've talked about Lee Sin, and we've talked about Dragon's Rage. So, All right, there's our Ionia cards, and now let's head on over to Demacia, our last region, um, our last returning region. And then after this, we're, we got all the Bilgewater cards to talk about our brand new region. So our Demacia champion is Quinn. Five mana, three, four, scout. When I'm summoned, summon Valor. <clears throat> so what scout means is that if you, if you attack, and it's your first attack for the turn, and only scout creatures are attacking, then you rally, and you get another attack step. So you want to scout out the area first. Valor is a two, one, challenger with scout so it's basically you get a fleet feather tracker that also has scout um 
I also think this cha- this champion's pretty good. I think that getting a a three four and a two one uh, for five mana like that's that's pretty decent. I think that uh, some people were thinking that Quinn wasn't that good whenever uh, she was first previewed, but I, I think that's a I think that's a pretty good uh, rate getting two bodies, um, and then of course you have the scout, uh, which is a good mechanic. And if leveled up by uh, attacking four times with Quinn in play, it's gonna be kind of tough to level up. Like if you have Quinn in play and then you attack and attack and attack and attack, and you've attacked four times, and your Quinn's still sitting there, and you're not, you haven't like already won. I mean, I guess then you get a leveled up Quinn. You know, so like, I'm not sure how much we're really getting this leveled up Quinn, um, and uh, how like. Yeah, so I'm not sure how much this is really going to level up, and that level up will really matter because it seems like by that by that time you've already attacked four times with your five mana card in play, and yeah, I feel like you've probably already won the game by then, or you're about to win the game. But the leveled up Quinn does summon a Valor every time she attacks, um, and that Valor that she summons is challenging the strongest enemy. So that's that's a really good attack trigger. So Quinn's really good at after leveling up but i just think that level up is going to be kind of too difficult or um like you're not going to you're not going to be losing a game and then you level up and now you win the game that doesn't seem like that's going to happen it's gonna it seems like you're going to be winning the game and then you level up quinn and then you win the game um, but you know we'll see i could be wrong quinn's the most disappointing for you um you do get, I mean, you get, you get two bodies. I think that that's, I think people kind of underrate this, just getting a two, one challenger um, with the, you know, a free fleet feather tracker. I think, I think that is pretty good. I think getting two bodies for one card makes, you know, makes Quinn playable for sure. And you add in all the scout stuff. I think, I think Quinn can be solid. All right, let's check out the other Demacia cards. We'll go to the beginning. Oh, I, I guess we could, we should see Quinn's champion spell. Anyway. The champion spell is Binding Assault. Which is just the two mana spell that summons Valor. Um, which I think that kind of makes sense. Like, Valor... So Valor's a little better than Fleet Feather Tracker. Like, it automatically has challenger you don't have to play another thing for challenger but then also has scout so having that be a two mana spell having that be two instead of one kind of makes sense and it being spell mana so it's not even exactly really two mana because you can use spell mana to cast um this so it's an okay spell but i'm not sure i'm not sure if we're really like playing three blinding assaults in decks um but it's a it's a just fine uh champion spell Oh, okay, not in power, in deck building. Okay, that's why. Okay, you're saying Quinn's disappointing because deck building, because scout is pretty self-contained effect. Okay, because you're you're playing your scout cards, you're playing your scout cards, and you're not really doing a lot else. Okay, I can, that makes sense. I can see that. All right, we got Rangers Resolve. Um, um, I'm not sure. I guess, I guess we'll kind of go go through these and see i haven't seen one any reveal cards that grant yeah i i think there was actually i think there was one in bilgewater that gives something scout it, like i think there's a card that like summons a one cost ally a random one cost ally from any region and then gives it scout also i think there's something like that but anyway rangers resolve is a one mana burst speed give allies tough this round i like this card i think this can be this is a sneaky good card. Um, this is one that pro people probably aren't talking about, but I think this could be a very useful card because this set has so many things that do one damage to all of your opponent's allies or do one damage to everything, deal one damage to two different things, three different things, stuff like that. And so I think Rangers Resolve at, at one mana could be a sneaky... Uh, card to to counter all of those you know maybe counter a withering whale counter a 
uh, like the damage from a Withering Whale, of course, counter the damage from a Static Shock, that kind of stuff. It's just one mana. I think this is a, a sneaky good card. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, yeah, that's one sneaky good. And like I said, pretty solid, uh, Binding Assault, not bad. Green Fade Warden, three mana, two, two with Scout and Barrier. So you get to, and is it an elite? That can also be useful. But you know, you get to just play this first. Or play this pre-combat, go straight to combat because it has barrier, attack for two, they just take the two damage, and then you get to attack again with other things. Uh, you know, it's it's filler. It's a common filler card. With all the good cards in Demacia, probably doesn't see the light of day, but it depends on how vital that scout is. If, scout, if the scout is that vital, then it will see the light of day, but if not... It won't. It's all about that scout. Loyal Badger Bear. Three mana, four, four. This is just above the curve. That four toughness, fourth toughness, um, really makes this card good. Um, yeah, like this, there's a lot of, there is, there is a lot of like three mana, four threes though in this set that trade with Loyal Badger Bear. But um, yeah, I think this is just a pretty solid card. It's nothing special, nothing flashy. There's no keywords here. We're just, um, you know, the keyword is big. We're just a, a three mana four four. I don't know if like, honestly, I don't know if you just put loyal badger bears in your deck, but Grizzled Ranger is absolutely incredible. This card is awesome because this is a, a four mana four one with Scout. And so this is going to be trading with something <clears throat> likely trading up if you can make it block but you know maybe they do maybe they deal one damage to it there's a lot of one damage cards maybe you sacrifice it um but anyway like whenever this dies if it you know if, if you can um you know have this trade for for a card already then last breath you get a loyal badger bear and that is awesome um because yeah if you can get this to trade with a card and then gain a four four that's really good that's like you know if um if Cursed Keeper actually like attacked and blocked and, and traded with stuff first and then make it to the 4-4. Four -four. Yeah, this is this is definitely one of the best cards in the set. Cause it's like it's basically, you know, last breath draw card, but that that draw card is a zero mana 4-4. Four -four that goes into play right away. Yeah, you know, so it gets that card advantage, but yeah, mini Trindomir. Um yeah, it's possibly the best card in the set. Possibly. Especially like best non-champion, you know, especially if you think about the non-champions. This card's very good. Um, lots of synergies everywhere, you know, like uh, there's that Shadow Owl card that's... There's the Shadow Owl card is right up there also. The three mana, two, one, that whenever you play it, you kill one of your allies to make two, two, one ephemeral um, challengers. And that seems pretty awesome here with Grizzled Ranger. For making a Callista Lucian deck, because that's also just like a whole lot of things that die to level up our Callista and Lucian. Yeah, and then you know, Chronicler of Ruin with this is obviously insane. There's a lot of things to do with this Grizzled Ranger and, the, and that other Shadow Isles card. There's things like Shadow Isles, Demacia can join together some more. No, like, this works really well with Chronicler of Ruin. You, you may be thinking of Ethereal Remitter, maybe? But, I mean, if you play this on 4, Chronicler this on 5, it's just like, it's just, it's the exact same as using Chronicler of Ruin on, um, on, uh, Cursed Keeper. But, you know, you just have the Grizzled Ranger still. It's a very, very good card. All right, five mana, fast speed, concerted strike. Choose an enemy, two allies, strike it. Okay, given Demacia some removal that's not just, um, that's not just swift combat. 
you know, you, you have a card where this is kind of like Whirling Death, but better because you have two allies just strike the enemy. The, the enemy doesn't strike back and this doesn't have to be used during combat like where with Whirling Death you have to, you know, have it used in combat. And it also kind of has a little bit of a failsafe where since you have two allies that are striking one enemy, if they have if they're holding removal, they could kill one of your allies, but you have your other allies still strike it. So this is just a really good removal spell for Demacia. Um, the the only problem, of course, is that it does cost five mana. But we've seen that like five mana is kind of where you're at with a lot of removal spells with like Grasp the Undying and Withering Whale and stuff like that too. So I I could definitely see this um see him play this this works really well with like garen you know things that like reward you for striking like garen um yeah or more more vi strikes yep um yeah i know it's it's two out yeah it's two different allies but still you get you get one strike with your garen you know like so things that reward striking you know it's that can help with that but this is a solid removal spell um, in, in a region that doesn't have very much removal. And a region that wants to strike. You know, maybe you have like your Fiora, you know, it gives you another, gives you another way for Fiora to kill stuff outside of combat. All right, then we have Great Horn Companion. It's a, it's a moose. With Scout. So five mana, four, five Scout. This is a lot. There's a lot of very good five mana Demacia cards. And this five mana, four, five is weaker than, you know, a lot of them. We're talking, you know, besides Garen as a champion, but then also um, the uh, Silverwing Lancer is incredible. But then also Radiant Guardian that you still want sometimes against aggro. Like this is behind those. But we have the keyword scout, so if you want to you want this in a dedicated scout deck, maybe. But I think I'd still probably be rather just be playing Silverwing Lancer all the time. And then yeah, maybe Radiant Guardian too. So probably just filler for um, probably not a, a deck, probably not a card that you play like in your uh, ranked decks. Probably just filler for Expedition. And we've talked about Quinn. Uh, Genini or Genevieve Elmhart. There we go. Genevieve Elmhart. Six mana four four. That's below. That's you know below the curve. Six mana four four. That's kind of small for a six drop. Um, but it has Challenger, and it has Scout, and when I'm summoned, which is a summon trigger, not not a play trigger, a summon trigger. That's important. Give other allies plus one plus one this round. So, you know, you get to, um, you know, kind of be like a Scythria. I mean, I think Scythria is probably going to be better here, but as far as Demacia six drops go. But, you know, you got Challenger and you have Scout. So it'll be it'll be interesting to kind of see. Um, does not pump, does not pump itself. Gives the other allies. So this is going to be a 4-4 they're challenging with. Um, yeah, so compared to other Demacia cards, this is definitely below the curve on stat lines so again it'll be how important how good is scout like attacking with this first and challenging and then attacking again you know how good is is scout um and i'm not i'm not a real um i'm not real um confident that it'll that this will be that you know this will see a lot of play and that scout's going to be really good but we'll see. Two attacks is pretty nice. And then finally, our last Demacia card. Unyielding Spirit. Eight mana and its burst speed. That's, in, that's definitely important. Grant an ally. I can't take damage or die. So it's the ultimate protection on one ally. I can't take damage and I can't die. And that is permanent. It's not until end of turn. That is permanent. So 
obviously you need to put this on a very very important unit you know like you're not you don't really want to put this on like a four mana card like this has to be on something very important but yeah like a champion like a garen like putting this on like a garen where garen lets you rally every single round and they can't and garen can't take damage and garen can't die that could just uh that could be awesome or you know putting this on a big overwhelm thing like a they who endure you know like you have this in your they who endure deck um they who endure is like a 12 12 and then you just put it on put this thing on him um yeah overwhelm unit um you know putting it on like your scout you know your your quinn that has scout where quinn suddenly starts getting to attack twice you know like you attack with your scout first it can't take damage it can't die and then you get to attack with it again this isn't just completely busted though remember they can still bounce things so will of ionia yeah zesty zach said that just recall it like will of ionia just shuts this down um but that's kind of that's kind of it like that's the that's the weakness besides that there's not really a weakness uh, purify that's true if it's not on a champion you probably want to be putting this on a champion but if it's not on a champion purify could slow it down <clears throat> um, could you put this in like a standalone deck you know standalones Demacia can can you get can you spend eight mana on your your standalone card like maybe you know like if you Z standalone and then you just unyielding spirit it and then start rallying. I, I mean, eight's a lot of mana. I, I don't know if you have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. But maybe you do. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know they, they want to win before you have this kind of mana. Or at least get way out ahead. But... So, I don't know. This seems, this seems more like a... This seems more like a crazy story kind of card than like an actual competitive we build around this kind of card, but you never know. You never know. All right, but anyway, that's a... Uh, oh, yeah, this could be good with Lux. Yeah, Lux is a good one. This could, this you know, like a Lux deck, especially like a Mage Seeker Lux deck, you know, like for your Mage Seeker deck. Uh, you probably play one or two of these. Probably play like one of those in like a Mage Seeker Lux that needs to cast like the more expensive spell. And has something like a Lux that's really valuable. Putting this on like a Thresh. Also, you know, like your Thresh is going to level up. You're going to attack with your th level up Thresh. Put a Lux into play. You can do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Put it on Teemo. <laughs> Get him, Teemo. What about on Karma? can't kill karma karma can just play an even longer game and you know karma wins the late game as we all know it does seem like this pairs pretty well with judgment like if you put this on something like a fiora or a garen or something like that first and then you can use judgment basically with with no worries of your thing dying besides just will of ionia Um, yeah, big unit with lifesteal. Yeah, big unit with lifesteal. There's some things to do with this. There's some things to do with this. <laughs> yeah, you can't kill karma anyways. That's true. That's absolutely true. All right, well, let's get to our, our uh, new region with Bilgewater. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there and uh, let me know which cards or which champions you're really excited about. Uh, which ones do you really want to you really want me to build around right away um, and you know any cards that I was underrating or overrating you know feel free to leave those comments too all right but uh, uh, anyway that's it here for unyielding spirit and uh, this rising tide set review where we just went over Piltover and Zon, Ionia and Demacia so uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video